Good morning and welcome. It's great to be in the house of the Lord with all of you here today. Excuse us for the late start, but we're going now. So welcome to all who are here. Uh, there's some uh, announcements I'd like to call your attention to in the bulletin. If you look at that bulletin, and first announcement I want to call your attention to is that um, Sunday school is from 9.45 a.m. to 10.30 every Sunday. And so if you next week, uh, you're up early, we'd love to have you at Sunday school. Also along with that, on April 13th, that's next Saturday, April 13th, 6 o'clock p.m., we are having our game night. We have all sorts of games, board games, and wonderful things. Dominoes are going to be there, and all sorts of wonderful things. And it's a time of fellowship, a time of food. We'll be having pizza and things of that nature. If anyone wants to bring anything, you're free to do that, any food. And so it's always a wonderful time, and we hope to see you there. Along with that, um, there's going to be a deacons meeting on Saturday, April 20th at 10.30 a.m. And then Young Adult Fellowship is scheduled to meet April 20th, that same day, at 2 o'clock p.m. And then Church Council meeting, April 21st, after the morning service. Are there any other announcements that need to be mentioned at this time? If there's no other announcements, I want to encourage you to prepare your heart for worship. Before I do the call to worship, uh, let me mention that Marcy is going to be going over to uh, nursery. If anyone would like to send their kids over to nursery with Marcy, I'm sure she'll be glad to have them there. And so th there's that announcement. If you would, for the call to worship, would you please, please rise, please, please stand. Life has been revealed to us in this Easter season. Gather once more to testify to life. We life Early believers were of one heart and soul. We too are calling to find common ground to in Christ. Peace be with you as we celebrate the resurrection. 
Christ is with us to renew our faith. At this time, if you please remain standing, you can turn with me to hymn number 161 in the red hymnal. Crown him with many crowns. God's people said, Amen. you may be seated. For the Old Testament reading this morning, I'd like to read to you from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 7, verses 1 to 13. That's Joshua 7, 1 to 13. It can be found on pages 338 and 339 in your pew Bibles if you'd like to follow along. So with that said, hear the word of the Lord, starting in verse 1. But the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them, so the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near beth Aven, to the east of Bethel, and told them, go up and spy out the region, so the men went up and spied out I. When they returned to Joshua, they said, not all the army will have to go up against I. Send two or 3,000 men to take it, and do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about 3,000 went up, but they were routed by the men of I, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. 
the elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across to Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other peoples of the country we will hear about this. And they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will we do for your name, for, for your name, for your own great name? The Lord said to Joshua, stand up. What are you doing on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken from the devoted things. They have stolen, they have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to its destruction. Go consecrate the people. Tell them, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord of God of Israel says. There are devoted things among you, Israel. You cannot stand against your enemies until you return them. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. And let us continue our worship as we sing hymn number 467 in your red hymnals. There shall be showers of blessing. You may stand as you are able. may be seated. We're going to go now to the Lord in a time of prayer. Uh, just a couple of prayer requests I want to call your attention to. Um, today we're going to be praying for um, Ann Colgan's friend Regina still. We'll be praying for her, lifting her up in prayer. 
We're also going to be praying today uh, for Drew, for travel mercies for Drew. He's in Vegas right now, believe it or not. And no, he's not there playing the, uh, the jack machines and all that stuff. He's, <laughs> he's there for a conference. Um, and so let's be praying for safe travel mercies for Drew. And let me also uh, mention that Drew also has a prayer request for us. He has a friend by the name of Laura. She works at the music school. And our husband, Bob, had a fall, and he's in the hospital, and he has other physical issues. So let's be praying for Bob today. And um, do we have any other prayer requests we can remember here today? Yes. Okay. Uh, Shadeen is traveling to Jamaica, right? And I will be praying for her. And, and of course, Tazalia as they travel to Jamaica. We'll be praying for you. Any other prayer request? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you indeed are a risen Savior, Lord Jesus, that you rose again from the dead. And because of that, Lord, you hear each prayer that we pray. And you answer according to your will, which is always best. And Lord, is in that confidence, in that boldness, we come before your throne here today, lifting up these prayer requests. Father, we pray today for all in need of any type of healing, whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual healing. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them and place your healing hand upon them, for you are the great physician. Father, we pray today for Regina, uh, Anne's friend, who has been battling with cancer and she's decided not to continue on with her treatments. And so, Lord, we pray for her at this time. Pray, Lord, you would help her to feel your presence, that, Father, you would draw her close to you. Bless her family, Lord, and keep them all close to you in every way. We also pray, Lord, today for Drew's uh, friend's husband, Bob, and pray you would be with Bob. He's in the hospital and they're finding all sorts of different situations. He has to undergo some surgery. And Lord, we pray you would guide the hands of the surgeon that you may work your healing power through those procedures. And Father, we also pray for travel mercies. Travel mercies for Drew is in Vegas. We pray, Lord, he would have a good uh, teacher's conference and pray, Lord, you will bring him back safe and sound. And Lord, we pray for Shadeen and Lord, for Tazalia as they travel to Jamaica. We pray, Lord, you would keep them safe and uh, bless them, Lord, in all they say and do. Father, we also would come to you today praying for, uh, of course, the war in Israel and the war of Ukraine. And we lift up those parts of the world today and pray for wisdom for the leaders and that, Lord, we would pray for peace and we lift up that part of the world to you today. We also pray, Lord, today for, uh, pray for wisdom for our own leaders, elected leaders and officials, that they would govern this land in a way that is both right and good. Father, we also would pray, as long as we're talking about praying for travel mercies, we know, Lord, that tomorrow is gonna to be that great eclipse and there are many people traveling to places where they have the most the most best way of looking at the eclipse. We pray, Lord, for travel mercies for all on the highways, that, Father, you will keep everyone safe. And, Father, we do pray for revival. We pray, Lord, today for the spread of your gospel, that people would come to know you as a Lord and as your Savior, and the Father, that we would always be ready to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone we know. And now, Lord, we pray you hear us as we pray that prayer. You taught your disciples when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
come to you these gifts, these tokens of our appreciation and gratitude. And Lord, we pray you would take these gifts offered to you today. Use them for your glory and honor, for we pray this in your name. Amen. For our New Testament reading this morning, I'd like to read to you from John chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. 1 to 13, not 1 to 3, but 1 to 13. Hear the word of the Lord. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore, the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come before your holy word here this morning. And Lord, we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would open our eyes to the truth you would have for us to learn here. And Father, I would pray that these words I speak here this morning would be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For indeed, we pray this in the name of your son, Jesus, and all that God's people said. Amen. Amen. as a rock which is thrown into a pond causes a ripple effect, so too one's actions have a ripple effect as well, either affecting the lives of others in a positive way or affecting the lives of others in a negative way. Here in our morning's text, we have an example, really, of both types of ripple effects. This being so, this morning, I'd, I'd like for us to consider how we all might have a positive effect upon others, and thus be a real blessing to others as well. So with this said as a very short introduction, let's talk about this ways we can be a positive ripple in this world in which we live. Well, first of all, number one, we can be empowered to cause positive ripples in the lives of others by heeding and obeying God's holy word. Heeding and obeying God's holy word. When Israel had its victory over Jericho, God had told them to destroy the riches of that city by fire as a sacrifice unto God for having given them the victory over Jericho. Yet, we read in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1, our Old Testament reading, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took some of them, some of the devoted things. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel, laying the groundwork for Israel's defeat in their next battle against the city of Ai, a much smaller military force requiring, as Joshua initially thought, a smaller force to take care of. Yet Israel, as we read here in our text, was soundly defeated by the city of Ai, which you really, if you think about it, had been no serious military challenge for Israel. All because of one man, all because of Achan, one man who disobeyed God by taking away from the devoted things of Jericho. Achan's actions produced a negative ripple which led to Israel's defeat and it affected all of Israel in such a negative way. If only Achan, if only Achan had heeded and obeyed God's word concerning those devoted things, as Paul reminds us in Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And it seems from our reading here in the book of Joshua, in our morning's text, at times others will reap from the actions we perform. My friends, God's word is filled with teachings that can bless others when we seek to heed and obey his holy word. Teachings, when obeyed, that can cause positive ripples in the world at large. 
teachings which can build up rather than tear down. Teachings such as loving others as Christ first loved us. Forgiving others as Christ has forgiven us. Praying for others, even our enemies. Sharing the good news of the gospel so that others may find salvation and with that eternal life. And of course, turning the other cheek when wronged. Think what our families, our workplaces, our schools, the community at large would look like if more of God's people would seek to heed and obey God's word for their life. The positive ripples that would go forward. My friends, let's not be as Achan, sending a negative ripple by disobeying God's word. Let us rather choose to send forth a positive ripple into the lives of others by seeking to obey and then applying God's word to our life on a daily basis. Again, as that old wonderful hymn puts it, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. That's true for the individual obeying God's word, but it's also true for the lives of others that we come into contact with. Yes, we are empowered to cause positive ripples by heeding and obeying God's holy word. Secondly, we can also be empowered to cause positive ripples in the lives of others by being open to being used by God for his glory. Open to being used by God. In our New Testament reading this morning, we find more than 5,000 people being fed, all because a boy with a small lunch was open to being used by God. When Jesus asked his disciples in John chapter 6, verse 5, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Jesus already knew of this boy with that small lunch in that crowd, whose lunch he would use for his glory. Jesus knew of that boy who would be open to being used by him to be a blessing to others there that day. The boy he would use to send forth the positive ripple of his power and his blessing at that noontime meal. Now the question for us here today is are we, are we ourselves open to being used by God for his glory and for the good of others? The truth of the matter is, our God just loves to use the seemingly small and the seemingly insignificant things of this world for his glory and for his purpose. When Andrew asked Jesus in John 6 verse 9, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far would they go among so many? Andrew was demonstrating a bit, of a, a bit of skepticism. Yet Jesus multiplied that small lunch to the point of feeding more than 5,000 people, demonstrating that even the smallest of gifts are great when given into the hands of Jesus. As the British evangelist Henry Varley once put it so well, the world has yet to see what God can do with one fully committed to him. And by God's help, I aim to be that man. My friends, you might be saying to yourself here this morning, 
Here I am, God, but what am I in the face of the vast needs of this world all around me? And with that, possibly be tempted to say, as Moses initially said, when God called him to lead his people out of Egypt, pardon your servant, Lord, but please send someone else. My friends, when we do so, we might miss out on being used by God for his glory and purpose. And with that, being that positive ripple for good in this world in which we live. Rather, let us say with the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me for your glory and for the betterment of others. You know, so many claim they want to see a better world, right? We hear that all the time. Oh, I wish the world would be better, a better place. Oh, I wish our community would be a better place. We hear that all the time, right? My friends, the truth of the matter is, it all starts with one person saying yes to God's call upon their life. Let us all take the plunge. Take the plunge into God's call and seek to produce positive ripples that will go forward from that. Lives that will be changed for the better and the glory that God, our God, will receive. The believer can always be empowered to cause positive ripples in the lives of others by being open to being used by God. Maybe he's talking to your heart today. And then lastly, thirdly, we can also be empowered to cause positive ripples in the lives of others by being ready to make sacrifices when necessary, to make sacrifices when needed. In sharing his lunch of five small barley loaves and two small fish, this boy was making a sacrifice. All this boy had, we're told, for lunch was two small fish and five small barley loaves. The key word here is small. Sharing, showing up twice here in Andrew's description of that boy's lunch. Loaves which were probably thin and small like modern-day crackers, and fish, which were probably the size of sardines. Just enough for one hungry boy. Yet he was willing to give them up into the hands of Jesus. My friends, his being open to being used by God was matched by his sacrificial spirit. In other words, his walk matched his talk. My friends, Jesus multiplied that very small lunch to feed more than 5,000 people. Two small fish, five small barley loaves. Yes, John 6.10 tells us that 5,000 men were there in the crowd that day, but that's not including the women and children that were there as well, causing one Bible commentator to estimate that the crowd could have been anywhere up to, up to 20,000. Yet that lunch that was sacrificed by that boy fed that large crowd. My friends, we're not talking about a small ripple here. We're talking about a tsunami of blessing. Are we willing to make the sacrifices needed to be that positive ripple in another person's life? Lending a helping hand to those in need? Lending a listening ear to those who just need to be heard? 
speaking an encouraging word to the discouraged, sharing the good news of the gospel, even in the face of opposition. My friends, these are the type of personal sacrifices that send forth that positive ripple into the world around us. A ripple that will continue growing long after we're gone. A ripple which starts with a sacrificial spirit. My friends, we can be empowered to cause positive ripples in the lives of others by always being ready to make sacrifices when necessary. My friends, all of us can be a part of something bigger than ourselves. All of us can be a part of a ripple effect of blessing that can change lives for the better. By heeding and obeying God's holy word, by being open to being used by God for his glory and his purpose, and by being ready to make sacrifices when necessary. What a privilege it is to be a part of what God is doing, to be a link in his chain of blessing in this world in which we live. Let us take that plunge into his call upon our life and see the ripple effect that can change lives for the better. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you have called us to join you in what you are doing in being a part of a ripple effect in this world that can change lives for the better, that can restore hope to the hopeless, can lift up the brokenhearted. Oh Lord, help us always be ready to take that plunge into your call and to see those ripple effects go forward. We thank you, Lord, and we pray all of this in your precious holy name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen and amen. At this time, as we go to the table, we're going to be singing hymn number 569, Make Me a Blessing in Your Red Hymnal. Please stand as you're able.
to this table, we partake of this bread and this cup, which symbolizes his broken body and his shed blood. With that said, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for your great love. We thank you, Lord, for this table and the elements of this table, Lord, which symbolizes your great love for us. The bread symbolizing your broken body and the cup symbolizing your shed blood. We thank you, Lord, for your great sacrifice. And pray now, Lord, your blessing upon us as we partake it. Speak to our hearts that this might be a time that we might take to examine our, our souls. For we pray this in your name. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you, ministering to you in his name. Take it eat, it's up to you will remembrance of him who laid down his life for us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this bread which symbolizes your broken body. Lord, you laid down your life for us, not because you had to, but because you chose to out of love. Dying for us, Lord, you put us before yourself. We thank and praise you, Lord, for thy great love. Oh, Lord, may we never doubt your love. Oh, Lord, may we receive it and pass that love on to others. For we pray this in your name. Amen. In the same manner, at the supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Ministering to you in his name, I give you the cup. Take a drink, it's often to real remembrance of him who shed his blood. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this cup, which symbolizes your shed blood. It is by, Lord, your shed blood upon that cross that our sins are forgiven that we who believe upon you have been adopted into your family as your children. Oh, Lord, let us live in such a way that the world can see that we do indeed belong to you. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. If you would at this time, please rise and open your red hymn book to hymn number 387, Blessed Be the Time.
the love of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and strengthen you. Now until that blessed day, we shall return to call us both. For we pray this in his name. Amen. Amen. Amen.